police officers all around your house. Any units gonna get into position? They need some cover here, Dunny. Smoke the door. We got a fire. This will be our next customer right here. Please, please. They decide to hurt themselves. Well, I want to see a search one. You're not going to, because there isn't one. Why you stop me? I mean, you drove up to it. You crashed. Right now, you're under arrest for being an idiot, OK? Do you mind? We don't need to be on the news. And most people that we're dealing with tonight are like yourself. You're very pro-police. This program contains actual police footage. No reporters, no recreations. It's a truck pickup. He's just turned off. Stand by. On to Russell, and he's going northbound. Northbound on Russell for Kingsway, 10 port. What do you call those things? Was it a blazer? I didn't see it. It's a... No, uh... Anybody in a position to assist 34? To the right, to the right. It's not him. No. Yeah, it is. Two can you give me an update or are you interested in the vehicle? Crossing Wall. Westbound on Bryant from Walton. It's a beige or brown. He's flying. Kind of a 4x4. Four four. He's flying. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. It's a suburban. Cross Gilly. Just cross Gilly. Ten four. Eastbound on Gilly. Or correct. Eastbound on Bryant. Past Gilly. He's rolled it. Burnaby three four EHS stat. So EHS what? It's on fire. EHS on BFD. We got a fire. Get over here. Get over here right now. Hurry up. Yeah, I'm at uh, Gilly and. Uh... Okay. Hey, is everybody all right, man? Hey, man, everybody's more fun with man. No, oh, man. Coming. <laughs> How many in there? Uh, everybody, everybody all right, man? Yeah. Are you okay? Anybody in the area there yet? Can you get, can you get up? Can you confirm that for me, please? Okay, watch yourself. Call three. 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 Call are you able to get out? Oh, oh, can. Okay. How is he? Just monitor this channel on incident going on at Colburn and Bryant. Sorry, Wilson. Sixteen, checking for an update. Here, hold this light. Here, give me your other hand. Okay, hold this. Are you able to stand up? Here, my first. Here, come here. Come here, hand, Trinka. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You want to keep track of the people here? I want these guys on the sidewalk right there. You sit, go sit on the side there. Go have a seat. Right here. Sit down. Right here. There's one more in there. Hello. Hi. What's this guy's name? No. Whoever's in there, what's his name? What's his name? Do you require a traffic number? What's his first name? I don't know, man. What? Jay? No, that's Liam. He's been drinking a lot? Yeah. 
Can you want to step back there, please? What's his name, Lim? Liam. Liam? Yeah. Okay, go over there. Liam, Liam, can you hear me? Yeah. How, are you hurt somewhere? No, I'm not hurt. You're not hurt. You've been drinking a lot? Yeah. Okay, so you're just a little dizzy. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there. The ambulance is right on the side here. They're going to come look at you before I move you, okay? Can you get your foot out there? Move your foot now, yeah. <laughs> Move your leg up. Just, can you slouch back that way? Anybody else? Here, give me your leg. Okay, I'm gonna help you out here. Give me your hand. Yeah, just crawl out that way. How do you feel? Do you feel any pain anywhere? No. Okay, come on out. Here, there you go. Okay, there. Okay, just have a seat here. Okay, just stay there till the ambulance comes and checks you out. Who's driving? I was. Okay, do you have any idea? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, why don't you sit down? You got a few cuts there. Okay. Sit down. Have a seat. Have a seat right there. Okay, one, two, three, four. How many were in there? There's four of us. Four of you? Four or five. Four or five? That, this guy was. Okay, Pete. You were there too? Okay, Why don't you sit, sit on the side of the road there? Sit down right there. Okay, do you have any ID on you? Do you have any, a wallet or something? Yeah, I got ID. Whose vehicle is this? That was my father's. Your father's? Is there a reason why you're going so fast? No, I was going fast at all. You were going fast at all. Do you have any uh, a driver's license on you? No, I don't. Do you have a wallet or anything? Uh, no. Identification? No. no. Is this really your father's truck? Yes. How much you had to drink tonight? I um, haven't drink that much at all. I've only had like at least a like, couple sips. How much was that? A couple of sips of beer. A couple of sips? What happened coming around the corner? You hit the parked car? Were they both parked, those cars? The cars? Yeah. Which, you hit the cars first, I guess, the parked cars? No, I was, I was, I came around the corner, right? Yeah. Because my friend lives around here. Yeah. And then, uh, then I hit the side, the, on the side of the car, and right. then I just lost control from there. How fast do you think you were going? I was, I was going under 50, I was going about 45. 45 what, kilometers? Yeah, oh, over around the corner I was going about 20. I was going like normal, right? But So 20 kilometers around the corner and 45 kilometers when you hit the car? No, That's no, what you no, 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 about, I was going about normal speed, I just, like everybody was talking to me, right? And then, you're required by law to come back to the office with me and provide two breath samples. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. So it's gonna happen to everybody else? Just have a seat. Some are going to the hospital to get checked out. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna be with me for about 30 minutes or 45 and then you'll probably be released or we'll call your, someone to pick you up or yeah. if you need medical attention further, then we'll go to the hospital with you or something. Yeah, okay, well my head hurts pretty bad. Okay, have a seat. All right. This is not gonna be long. We'll bring him to the office, do him for 4-3, and call someone to pick him up or something. Because yeah. if he's in an accident, I'd rather not have him himself. Which way were you going? You coming down this straight? Straight down. You were going straight down? Yeah, there's, yeah there's, I'm going to have to... Re over here. I'll have to reconstruct my direction and all yeah, that. No, I just want... They were coming down this Straight story. down, definitely. Did they hit over towards the curb there? I didn't see the accident. Oh, okay. I came around the curb, and it was already and done. it was already... already yeah. Was anybody ejected out of the car? No, they all came crawling out the top. Okay. Two of them, anyway. He admitted he's a driver yet? He has. Okay. Okay. To you, and then he tells me he wasn't. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyways, okay. You have everything you need? Um, yeah, pretty well. Okay. My role in this case is a uh, collision analyst. The vehicle uh, apparently went into yaw. It's a side slipping of the tire and uh, lost control hitting the curb up ahead. And as you can see, there are chunks of cement out of the, out of the curb, the cement curb. And it's quite evident on the Jeep itself that there, uh, are, there are gouges and chunks of metal right out of the rim. So it's apparent that that, that is what hit the, uh, the concrete curbing. Uh, of course, the vehicle was going too fast to negotiate uh, the corner and that's why it lost control. And at this point, uh, we took our measurements and uh, we'll make some calculations to uh, estimate the vehicle speed uh, when it started to lose control. And when we got to the office, he did provide two samples of breath. Both samples were 130 milligrams the legal limit being 80. Now, the driver faces several charges. He's going to be charged with impaired driving, blowing over the legal limit, dangerous driving, and failing to stop for police causing a pursuit. What's up? I just grabbed my cash. Those two guys? Yeah. Five Charlie 11. Five Charlie 11, go. And this was a robbery. Uh, suspects were eastbound uh, through the houses in Victoria. 10 4. Dog unit. 10 4 Kilo 8 2 is eastbound through the houses from the 4800 Victoria. Any weapon mentioned, 5 Charlie 11? None mentioned, uh, suspects are two oriental males, about 14 or 15. Okay, copy that, Kilo 82, 14 to 15 years old, oriental male. Five Charlie, uh, five one. Five Charlie, five one. All units continue to the east. I'm gonna go back and talk to the victim there. <clears throat> the guy there? Any further discussion, Five Charlie, hello? Got one suspect on the bus here. You're under arrest for robbery. Put your hands behind your back. What do you mean robbery, man? Put your hands behind your back. I was trying to help this guy with the other dude. The guy ran through the bushes. Ask the guy, man. Why are you asking, man? I should have one hundred and twenty dollars. This guy was the guy you grabbed. He grabbed it, eh? The other guy gave it to me. I went to. I don't have any cuffs. Uh, where's the other guy? Well, that's what I was trying to get. Any idea where he went? I know um, where he went, man. That's what I was trying to change. Where'd he go? Through the back there. Yeah. He went between the houses of 47, 78. We ran to the alley and didn't see him. Well, that's so the they probably went southbound, because this guy would have gone southbound and come back here to the bus. So uh, get the Okay, you're under arrest for robbery. You have the right to retain and instruct counsel without delay. I was trying to get... That means you can call a lawyer if you want. If you can't afford a lawyer, a legal aid lawyer will be provided for you free of charge. If you don't know how to contact a legal aid lawyer, I'll provide you with a phone number for him. You understand that? Yeah. Man, I was trying to help the guy. The guy started running away. The guy, the other Where's the money now? The other guy's got it. That's what I was trying to chase when you yeah. guys pulled up. You yeah. seen me. Yeah. How old are you? 19. You're 19. I know where the guy went, man. The guy. Where'd he go? He just went through the back. Where through the back? Which way in the back did he go? Through those houses. Where? That way, man. If I can... When you got to the lane, where did he go? Huh? When you got to the lane, where did he go? What do you mean? Well, that's that's where I was trying to run after him. Mm -hmm. So where's the money now? Well, if I could find him, I could probably get it. So he gave you money and you gave it back to him, and then you decided to chase him? No, the other guy was going to give it to me while I was trying to help the guy. Mm-hmm. Well, you Where? took the money off of this guy. Ask the guy. He was the one. Yeah. The other guy was the one who grabbed him first, went up yeah. to him, and. And then you took the money off him. 
Well, I don't know. He was. You took his. You took his money off him. No, man. The other guy yeah. wanted to take his phone and everything. Uh huh. But you took his money. Huh? I don't know if he got his money. He was digging his pockets and shit. Yeah. No, you took his money. I didn't take his money. The other guy took the money. He yeah. To get his phone. CPT times two, FTA times two, by Vancouver. Awaiting dispositions from August of '93. Prohibited firearms until October '96. Thank you. This uh, suspect I have says that's probably him now. What was the track pants? What was he wearing? He was wearing black. Are you saying this is the guy, uh, Jim? Yeah, from the descrip description you just gave, uh, the suspect here says the suspect you have is probably the guy. This fellow we just arrested and searched matched the uh, description of the uh, suspect. He was stopped, searched. We found a, found a quantity of drugs in his pocket, and uh, we also found a quantity of cash. He's uh, possibly connected to the robbery that just took place up the street, and uh, he'll be taken in for further questioning. He's in the back here? There's one in the back. Is that your buddy? No. no. That's the only one I saw. Let put him in the back, so I don't know. Nope. That's my guy, right there. That's the guy you picked up down the street? Yeah. Okay. No, the witness says that's not the guy. Oh, witnesses? Yeah. Okay, good enough. We can come out. Come on out there, sport. Give me your lucky day. Can you go? Nope. <laughs> Oh, you got a, a nip charge on him. Oh, so you want to throw him back in? Well, I can't because uh, it was, uh, I didn't have grounds to search it. Um, yeah, sure. I'm uh, there in here, but I want to go up and have a look on Victoria Drive. These two came up, and then, like, um, one guy goes, like, the Oriental guy, can I have your phone? And I started stepping back. I okay. go, no, it's my mom's. And then, like, um, and then both of them came, came back up to me. And um, the Oriental guy like pushed me against the fence okay. and was holding. Okay. Slow down. I gotta write this. Yeah. I was at the mailbox when this happened, and like mm -hmm. he just pushed me against the wall or the fence, and then like um, he, the Oriental guy held my hands down while the the Caucasian guy like went through my pockets and was like just trying to find cash and everything. At one point, they both told you to give you their money. Give you. Yeah. Like the the guy like. Um, the Caucasian guy said, like, he'd shank me right here and there. Like, he was like, I'll shank you if you don't give me your money. And then at one point, the Oriental guy goes, like, just shoot him right now. Just get the gun and shoot him. Like, that's when I start to struggle. go to court or anything? Mm-hmm. Shit. Don't worry about it. I've been a policeman for 14 years, and in those 14 years, nobody's ever come back against a witness, unless they know each other personally, right? These guys, they're saying all this stuff, right? They're just trying to scare you. They deserve to go to jail for what they did to you and to stop them from doing it to other people, okay? You don't have to worry about court. It's not that scary a process. It's no big deal, all right? We'll look after you. Yeah. Okay. Can I get a ride to my girlfriend's house? Just like two blocks away. Sure. I just don't feel like walking anymore. We're driving down the street here, came upon uh, two suspects robbing a young fellow. Uh, a citizen came along to the, to the victim's uh, aid and was able to chase the suspects off as we pulled up. They ran between the houses. Uh, shortly after, we arrested uh, one of the suspects off the bus. The second suspect escaped. He's described as a teenage uh, Vietnamese male. Units in the area checked a party matching the description down the street, and uh, upon checking him, discovered that he was in possession of uh, some cocaine. This party was released, and uh, charges against him are possibly pending. I guess he was just in uh, the wrong place at the wrong time and got caught here.
We're going to be setting this uh, FATS3 trainer up for some confrontation simulations where the members are going to be exposed to different types of confrontations from verbally aggressive people to suspects wielding knives to suspects pointing and or shooting firearms at them. FAT stands for Firearms Training Systems. This is as close to the real thing as uh, we can put our members to without get anybody getting hurt. They're going to react to these scenarios. It's a high stress simulation. The screen's life size, the sounds are words and such that the bad guys would use against police officers on the street. The whole system is designed on, on raising the uh, level of stress in the members and having them react to a confrontation, a serious confrontation with as much reality as we can, again, without anybody getting hurt. I'm going to outfit you with some uh, training equipment. One of two guns. These are your Model 38, 38 caliber uh, revolvers, similar to what we carry. The barrel's a four inch barrel versus our five inch. Each one is retrofitted with a laser within the barrel itself. It works off of a uh, barbecue starter, for layman's terms. A little spark that initiates a laser beam. It goes down range. It'll hit the screen, particularly whatever you're shooting at. You won't see where it, the round's hitting, but where it is picked up is with a laser hit camera, we call it. it records your hit. When we, do, when we play the scenario back, the computer analyzes your hits on the suspects as a wound, a lethal or a non-lethal, or a miss. Okay. Um, that's if you're involved in a scenario where your firearm is what you're going to use to control the particular situation. The other type of handgun we use uses a primer, where it's actually a spark from a, a large pistol primer goes off that initiates a laser beam and it sounds like <laughs> so. Kind of loud, eh? Okay, remember that. Some of the scenarios you're going to be exposed to, pepper spray may be an option. This is a can of inert. Feel free to spray the screen. It will dry. But if that's an option, you feel it's you're justified using the pepper spray to control the individual, feel free. You'll be given that to wear on your belt as well. You'll also be given a baton. You put that on your baton ring if you've got one. If you feel this is the appropriate option to use to control it, do so. I'd ask you not to hit the screen though. Save the pieces for me, okay? It's a simulation, you go through it. But those are the three tools you normally carry in your belt on the street. We're going to give you them today for each scenario you go to. You may need one, some or all of them. You may not need any of them. Here's a brief introduction. I'm going to show you a few clips of some of the scenarios to get you the idea of the size of the people you're dealing with, the sounds. Just get you a bit more into the environment. to Firearms Training Systems Judgmental Pistol Shooting. You'll observe several scenarios on shoot, don't shoot situations and be evaluated on your judgment, accuracy, and reaction. Additionally, you'll be accountable for the commands you use and must be fully prepared to justify drawing your weapon. This particular laser disc we're working off of was developed by Halifax PD. It's the only Canadian content laser disc that we have in Canada, so that's why we purchased it. It was filmed by their police department using their members as actors and uh, participants. Okay, the first drill we're going to do, I'm going to expose you to uh, each of you to the same scenario. Real quick, you're going to be uh, coming into the room, I'm going to give you some audio, some verbal direction, plus you'll hear it from the laser disc. You and your partner are responding to whatever. It'll describe it. That'll give you what you're going to in a nutshell, real short and sweet. Of course, you're going to ask yourself, well, what's, what else is going on? But then the scenario is going to run its course. I want you to react to the scenario as best you can. As soon as you're done, you're going to turn around and head out of the room. I want you to write down what you saw, what you heard, description of the suspect or suspects, weapons, if any, what you said, what your partner said, the who, what, when, where, the whys of the confrontation that would be expected for you to answer after the fact. Then we're going to bring you back in and compare your uh, stories, so to speak, and we'll see what happens. So I'll need the first volunteer. 
All right, just have a listen to what you're gonna to be told here and then go from there. Here we go. You and your partner are chasing two suspects down an alleyway. No. Okay, turn around. Turn around, don't look at the screen. Yeah. That's why we're doing this. It's an orientation, you'll get into the no, situation. No, I, I feel totally out of the... Don't worry, it'll take, give me your gun, your pepper spray. And your baton. From what you saw, I want you to just go out and write down what you saw, what you heard. Descriptions. Now this, this first one's an orientation, you see lots of uh, real inhibited reactions because of the environment and, uh, All set? and such. So, yeah, bring them on. All right, here we go. You and your partner are chasing two suspects down an alleyway. Good, good, turn around. He pulled the trigger twice on that one, but the uh, second round didn't go off. Everybody reacted differently, which is normal. But what I want to get from you is, uh, well, your stories. I'm doing an interview now three people involved in the shooting and three of Canada's finest, so I want to get the truth, so to speak. So I'll start you off. I need uh, the number of suspects we're dealing with in this hallway. Two. Two? Okay, everybody say two suspects. Okay. Point to remember here is that however ridiculous you think your answer may be, in front of your, in front of your peers, say it anywhere because it's your perceptions of what you saw and your actions were based on those perceptions, not on your partners, or not on the guy down the street, or not on the Crown Attorney six months later. But you did what you did because you saw what you saw, and what you individually saw. So whoever ridiculous you may think it is, I want to hear about it, okay? All right, let's deal with uh, suspect number one. Let's say the guy on the left. Is your face in down screen, the guy on the left? Can I get a description of him? Male. Male? Yeah. Everybody okay on that? Yeah. All right, we got a male. Caucasian. Okay, male Caucasian. Let's deal with a shirt. What do we got for shirt description? White. Red and white striped shirt. Red and white striped. Okay, so we got a white. Red and white. Anything else on his shirt? Short sleeve. Yeah. Short sleeve. Okay. Uh, this guy have a weapon? Yes. Yes. What, okay, and what did you perceive it to be? A pistol, some sort of handgun. Handgun. handgun? Everybody good on that one? Yes. Uh, did he shoot that handgun towards you? Yes. How many shots did you think you heard? One. One. All right. How about this uh, second individual? Male, female? Male. Yeah. I thought you were male. Male. Uh, description. Unless I thought it was long hair. Yeah. And he was taller. I thought he was taller than just dark over. Taller? Shirt? Pants? Anything? He was in the shadows. So I couldn't get a good description of myself. Any clothing descriptions? He was, he was Caucasian too. He was, he was white. Okay. Any weapons? I thought I saw a muzzle flash come from that direction. Okay. That explains your shot. <laughs> yeah, it's perceptions. It's a perception. Okay, your, your, your body, your mind, you're, you're only capable of focusing on one thing at a time. And if it's a lethal threat, you focus that much more on it. This fella here could be doing a two-step with Dolly Parton. And at the time that you're dealing with this individual, the shot's coming at you, he's irrelevant. What would you say if I told you this guy is about six foot two, 200 pounds, he's not wearing a shirt, he takes a, about a 12 inch bladed butcher knife, looks at you, jams it in the doorway, and then turns and runs down the hallway. And he, and he is this far apart from this guy. You and your partner are chasing two suspects down an alleyway. A couple of phenomena that you're under as a result of this perceived lethal threat is tunnel vision and auditory blocking. You fired a shot. Yeah. Did you, how did the shot sound with the primer? Were your ears ringing when you left the room? No. Were your ears ringing when we did the first demonstration? No. Okay, did it appear louder when we first did it or? Yes, it appeared yeah. louder in the first room. 
Yeah. yeah. Just okay. Register that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's auditory blocking. That's your that's your mind taken over, your survival mind taken over, and you're going to deal with all your energies to combat that threat, including your vision, tunnel vision to the gun, right to the threat, your hearing, vroom, all the extraneous things are going to be gone so that your body is most capable of handling that threat for your survival, the survival animal instinct that we've had since the caveman days. We've done this, done this scenario countless times, and I can count on two hands the number of people that saw the guy with the knife. It's, it's the exception by far, not the rule. And that's why. We tend to uh, second guess ourselves a lot and, and become second guessed by the, uh, the people, the hindsighters, the people that come in after the fact. And, and have all the facts before them and then start analyzing it. And we, we, we tend to start second guessing ourselves where you got to stick to your guns. This is what I perceive and this is what I did on those perceptions. across the complainant's residence here about three hours ago. They managed to tangle themselves up. They're tied together. They got a chain there. And they got wrapped around that little tree there. Now they can't get free. Uh, give them a, a sound to try to befriend them, but uh, that didn't help. Uh, this one in the front here uh, lunged at me, so, uh, so we've given up all attempts to... Uh, Do they have any idea who the owners are? Well, they got tags on them. The one dog does, but uh, we've had no uh, success in trying to come down, even take a look at the tags. I've driven up there with my car and hopefully they jump up and, you know, get get a name or something, but uh, nothing. So. Have you called the SPCA right now? The SPCA has been called. Uh, we're just waiting for them. They're coming from Vancouver, so that can take some time. In the meantime, we're just going to keep an eye on them. Hopefully they don't get, get loose. And uh, they've already tried attacking a gentleman that was walking down the alley, and uh, that was bad enough. That Actually, the pit bull's pretty calm here. <laughs> Rab, I think he likes you. <laughs> right now, we've got SPCA that's just shown up. And we'll let him deal with them. They're a little more trained to deal with these type of animals than we are. Hopefully they'll go cooperatively with them. So what's your approach with all of this? What are you going to do with the two dogs? Uh, what I'll probably like to do is get one on a catch pole and then have one of you guys hold on to it so can get the other one. And then we'll just take them off one at a time. Okay, this so this will be very painless for the dog? Uh, yeah, relatively, yeah. Okay. What are those you're giving the dog? Just, I'm going to try and talk him into being cooperative, I guess. This is just a little enticement. One on the left and one on the right. Yeah, the brown one, right? Yeah, the brown and black one. What we've got right now is the SPCA is out with them and just giving them some dog snacks, try and gain their confidence and trust, and hopefully they'll they'll go with this gentleman. Come on. Good boy. Come here. Come here. That's a good job. Sit down now. Sit. Come here. Seem to have calmed down a little. <clears throat> I really calm down now. Hey, cut that out. It's a bad dog. You be quiet. Just on 91 Bravo, 14446. Bravo. The RO of the vehicle was 15 relatives there, which went out and checked the vehicle, it was gone. She lives in Vancouver. 
Okay, well, we've got one in the vehicle now, and he was the younger one, and he was very good. How old would you say they are? Uh, Puppies? It's hard to tell without getting a good look at their teeth, and I don't want to look at their teeth. <laughs> So the other one's a puppy. This is this guy's a little older. I'm just gonna walk him that way. So. Bus BC has managed to very willingly get both dogs into the truck without incident. No one was hurt in this. Dogs were extremely cooperative with the SPCA and the situation turned out very well. No one was hurt in this, dogs weren't hurt in any of this, no one was mistreated and we lucked out in this situation. So right now the dogs are going to be taken to Surrey SPCA in which there they're going to trace back through the dog tags where these dogs are from and return them to their owner so these dogs can go home. The best thing to do in that sort of situation would be just to try and um, diffuse it, let them settle down, stand back from them, let the dogs calm down a little, and then try to approach them. Uh, they're going to be in an agitated state because they're, they're restrained together, and the added excitement just embroils them. So the best thing to do in that situation is just to stand back, stay away from them, stay out of their reach, and approach them very cautiously. situation where a motorcycle is taken off from members. It's presently uh, westbound on uh, 12th Avenue from Clark Drive. We're going to need a supervisor in that guy. Okay. 12 and Windsor. Zulu 14. Zulu 14. I uh, didn't go to uh, Kingsway. I was at 12 Kingsway when he came across and became involved. Good for Member's been involved. Zulu uh, 79. Zulu 79. Uh, what's the vehicle description? The motorcycle. Only uh, plate number is Charlie. You see a motorcycle? Didn't get the rest. Motorcycle. No. We've been here for the whole red line. 5 Echo 12. 5 Echo 12. Yeah, that motorcycle was last westbound from Fraser on 12th. All right. Very much turned on if you ever went to uh, Kingsway. Sure. At 986, you attend the police involved at Broadway and Woodland. Broadway and Woodland. <laughs> Members have been involved at uh, an intersection on 12th Avenue. Uh, they're calling for an emerge ambulance. Six Delta 5 1, I want to have uh, 12th Avenue closed down, please. And where are you going to have the units on street? Closing off 12th, 12th Avenue now. Units on street. Yellow 7 9. Involved means what? Involved means that the Yellow members were uh, in pursuit of the motorcycle and they've, uh, they've had an accident. I just saw a motorcycle uh, pass me at uh, 12th and Clark, uh, heading, heading west along 12th, going really fast. And then uh, a couple of seconds later, this police cruiser came peeling down um, down 12th, chasing the, the motorcycle. He put on his siren and put on his flashers, but there's a lot of traffic 
heading east along or west along 12th and uh, they were weaving in and out of traffic and you know it looked like an accident looking for something to happen so uh, obviously it did as a result of the chase members uh, they sustained minor injuries um, the motorcycle that uh, they were chasing managed to uh, elude them unfortunately uh, we have one civilian injured but uh, he'll be all right as well Unfortunate in a situation like this that uh, when members do uh, take it upon themselves to pursue a vehicle that's uh, broken the law, that uh, civilians are injured, but uh, there comes a point where uh, a choice has to be made whether to continue the chase. In the case of uh, motorcycle pursuits, uh, the speeds are relatively high and the, uh, the chances of a collision of such nature are also uh, also high as well. And as you can see, the uh, stupidity of the motorcycle caused a lot of uh, unnecessary damage and injury. What time did you have your last drink? About, I don't know what time it is. What time do you think it is? About two. I have about two rum and coke. Um, we're sitting there watching The Last Mohicans, a great movie. and uh, inside your house. Inside the house over yeah, there. Yeah, my house. And all of a sudden we hear a big bang, and he goes, oh, there's a car accident outside. So we said, oh, let's go look at it, see what's in his heart. Come outside, my car is just totaled. Her car's right here on the ditch up here. Right and on the sidewalk here? On the sidewalk, yeah. and yeah, and we're like, we're like, oh, are you okay, ma'am? She's like, oh, uh, someone cut in front of me. I was trying to swerve, and I hit your car, and this and that. and not making too much sense and uh, look at my car and then her friends came up and she sort of wanted to leave I guess and uh, we said no no you should just wait for the cops to come and, uh, and I guess you guys just showed up my car's a complete write off and I'm hung up to school but that's life in a big city I guess eh? Well I hope not. So you say she was trying to leave? I don't know if she's really so, trying to leave or not but it seemed that way I mean it really seemed that way to me. Was she alone in the car? She was yes she was. Yeah. But, uh, You've been here since you heard the crash. You came out immediately. Came out right immediately. Yes. Okay. So you haven't seen her uh, drink anything or take anything in her no, mouth or no, anything like that. Since we okay. did she get out of the vehicle at all? Yeah, she did right away. She was out of the vehicle. Okay. So did you did you see her actually driving the car? No, I didn't say that. No, we were inside and we heard it after the bang. So you know, she. Okay, heard. but she was still in the vehicle when you came out of the house. No, she was no, out of the she vehicle. Was out of the vehicle. Okay. Did she say to you that she was driving the car? Yeah. Yeah, she did. She said she uh, probably saved someone's life because they cut in front of her and she had a swerve and do an amazing oh, reaction. Okay. Of her. <laughs> okay. So who moved the car around to the street? She did. I she said did. maybe she's moved leave your car there, but she is. Moved it anyways, and it's kind of funny because she's moving it, and as she's moving forward, she almost hit the car in front of her. It's just like she should not be on the road right now. All right. And if she's not drunk, then she shouldn't have a license. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks very much. No Fear the lady in the white Mustang was driving westbound on 33rd. Uh, this brown Honda was legally parked. The driver and owner was inside the house. She drove into the side of his car and they came out and found her still here on the road and they've been standing by waiting for us to attend. She appears to have been consuming alcohol. Is going to go down for a breathalyzer. Ma'am, you understand I'm a police officer? Okay, a reasonable and probable grounds to believe that you've consumed alcohol in the operator of this motor vehicle within the preceding two hours. Therefore, request that you accompany me for enabling the samples as is our to enable breast samples as are necessary to be obtained to determine the level of alcohol of any in your blood. Do you understand that? Okay. All right, we've got a wagon coming down that's going to bring you, take you down to the police station. All right. Is your car locked up? You gentlemen with her? No, no, no. Okay, come on. Okay, you stand at the front of the wagon. She's gonna go down for uh, PTA, so I'll meet you in the lane. Okay, can I just get some information before we race? You off? betcha. Let me just oh, we got a lady who, by her own admissions, had at least two rum and coke, and while driving home, relatively close to home, seems to have found a parked car that jumped out in front of her. 
She struck it. Fortunately, nobody's been injured, but she's going to obtain a criminal record and driving prohibition upon conviction. So it's not going to be the best move for her. Cab's a lot cheaper.